I would cover this topic under following heads, history, types of microscopy, bright field microscopy, parts of microscope, some basic concepts of microscopy, like properties of light and lens, infinity corrected system, numerical aperture, magnification, resolution, working distance, field of view, contrast, aberration. I hope the lab people must have heard about these things, but they would be richer after this presentation in knowing what these things are really. Then what are the optical components of the microscope? Like what are objectives, eyepieces, condenser? What is image formation plane? What is polar illumination? And in the last, how to use a microscope. So microscope is a combination of two words. One is Latin, that is micro, that means small, and a Greek word scopus, that means to look at. It is an instrument which is designed to make fine details visible. Jacarias Jensen and his son, two Dutch spectacle makers, while experimenting with several lenses in a tube, discovered that nearby objects appear greatly enlarged. This was the forerunner of compound microscope and telescope. That was in 1590. Then another Dutch person, Anthony von Dunhoek is called father of microscopy. He was the first person to see and describe bacteria, yeast, plants, and teeming life in a drop of water. He also saw circulation of blood capsules in the capillaries. This is his primitive microscope. Then comes the Robert Hooke. He was in the same century and he is called English father of microscopy. He reconfirmed Leeuwenhoek's discovery of tiny living organism in a drop of water. He made a copy of Leeuwenhoek's light microscope and then greatly improved upon the design. Then came the 18th and 19th century microscope by Powell and Leland. You can see that they have objectives, IPs, condenser, everything is there, but body tube is very long. In, 10, in the 20th century, G's laboratory made these microscope. Everybody who has uh, had a uh, biology class must be familiar with this microscope. So what are the types of microscopy? There are three types. One is light microscopy, electron microscopy, and atomic force microscopy. Today, we are going to talk about light microscopy. That includes bright field microscope, dark field microscope, phase contrast microscope, differential interface contrast microscope, epifluorescence microscope, and confocal. Today, I will confine myself to bright field microscopy. This is the most elementary form of microscopic illumination, which is used in compound microscope. In this, light is transmitted through the sample and it is absorbed by it. It is useful for those, it is useful for those specimens that can be contrasted via dyes. The name bright field is derived from the fact that the specimen is dark and it is contrasted by surrounding bright viewing field. So in bright field illumination, the samples contrast come from its absorption of the light while in dark field illumination, uh, you are late and you are, yeah, please. 
in dark field illumination the contrast comes from the sample scattering the light so in bright field microscope there are three types upright inverted and stereo microscope the upright mi microscope is suitable for slide it has a short working distance and i will talk about this microscope today inverted microscope is suitable for large volume of samples like cell culture etc and stereo microscope is suitable for petri dish samples micro manipulation and it has a long working distance these will be covered in the next lectures so what are the parts of microscope if you see a microscope it has a head assembly the arm to carry it off and there is a stage assembly and there is a base in the eye with the in the head we have eye pieces the revolving nose piece with objectives in the stage we have slide holder and below the slide holder is the condenser with iris diaphragm in the stage have pores focus and fine focus and stage controls then in the base is the built in light source and uh, uh, there are brightness adjustment uh, screws also so the light source in bright field microscopy is either quartz halogen bulb or it is led as i told you earlier the specimen is trans illuminated from below the stage then this condenser collects this trans illuminated light and focuses it on the sample then these objectives collect light which propagates through the sample and then they enhance the details by magnification means they magnify the image then they produce a real image of the specimen then this eye piece or camera views or records the image and produce either a virtual image which can be observed but uh, visually or a real image which can be projected on the screen or on a photographic plate so this is the anatomy of the microscope i was telling you that the built in light source is built in uh, or it can be present as a lamp house assembly so for illumination part we use mirrors like mirror which is present here then there is imaging path in which we use prism this is to show you the uh, field diaphragm which controls how much light can enter this sub stage condenser then we see this is the tube lens which is placed in the body tube between objectives and eye pieces and this is used for infinity correction i will talk about these things later so the purpose of microscope is number one to create magnification so that the structure can be resolved by eye number two to create contrast so that the objects become visible magnification is to make image large enough so that i can appreciate the resolved details what is resolution resolution is ability of a lens to separate or distinguish small objects that are placed very close together then what is contrast it is the difference in the light intensity between image and adjacent background relative to overall background intensity i will cover these later on again 
Now coming to some properties of light, these are this is all physics. First is the absorption. When light passes through an object, its intensity is reduced depending upon which color is absorbed. Thus, the selective absorption of white light produces colored light. Then second property is refraction. The direction of a ray of light changes when it passes from one transparent medium to another with different optical densities. So a ray from less to dense medium is bent perpendicular. And there is greater deviation with the shorter wavelength of light. Then comes another property of light that is diffraction. That is light rays bend around edges and they form new waveforms which are generated at sharp edges. Then comes the diffraction, uh, dispersion. That is separation of light into constituent wavelength when entering a transparent me medium. This, that was all about properties of light. Now coming to properties of lens. They, the lens focused light at a specific point, which is called focal point as all of you know, and it is often termed as principal focal point. If we uh, make an imaginary pl plane perpendicular this, to this focal point, it is called focal plane. The distance between center of the lens and the focal point is called focal length. So the strength of the lens is related to the focal length. The shorter the focal length, more is the magnification. Now, every lens has two focal points for light, entering each side, one in front, and one in the rear. The focal pl uh, plane, which is near to the front of the objective is called front focal plane, while the which, which is behind it, located behind the objective lens is the called rear focal plane. The rear focal plane for high magnification objectives is generally situated, situated inside the barrel of the objective. While for the lower magnification objectives, it is exterior to the barrel. It is located near the area where the objects, objectives are mounted or within the uh, microscope nose piece. Then coming to the lens and bending of light. As I told you, light is refracted or bent when passing from one medium to another. So refractive index is a measure how greatly a substance slows the velocity of the light and bend it. The direction and magnitude of the bending is determined by this refractive index of the two media which are forming the interface. So if refractive index of the medium between the lens and the cover glass is increased, the angle of diffracted light collected by the objective is increased. This we can use, uh, we can do by using immersion oil because it has the same refractive index as the cover glass slip, that is 1.5. So the refraction of the rays of the cover slip interference interface is eliminated, what which you can see here when it is the interface is air. And effective half angle is increased, so resolution is improved. Now coming to the infinity corrected optics. Most of the modern microscopes are infinity corrected. What does it mean? It means that when the light passes, beam passes from a specimen to the objective lens, it enters in as an infinity parallel beam. 
which is then collected by the tube lens which forms an intermediate image in finite correction optical system which was used earlier and which is also present in uh, some of the uh, microscopes is there is no tube lens so the objective lens forms an intermediate image by itself so what is the advantage of infinity corrected system here you can see that there are there is very less ghost images so it eliminates ghost images caused by converging light second thing is there is no change in the magnification even when distance between objective and tube lens is altered so this allows us to place filters and polarizers to be inserted here in this infinity space without any other correction further the same thing has been shown here here it shows that a specimen is recorded by this objective and it is first projected at infinity with a parallel bundle of rays then tube lens focuses this parallel ray bundle into magnified intermediate image in located inside the eyepiece at its front focal plane this eyepiece then acts as a second magnifier and this translates the dimension of intermediate image into parallel rays just like here what you should remember that the term infinity optics refers to production of a flux of parallel rays after after they pass through the objective and it is not that there is infinite space in the is available inside the microscope i hope it's clear what do you say is it clear no answer so coming to another point that is numerical aperture when a small object is viewed through a microscope the incident light is deflected or diffracted the smaller is the object more is the deflection so to get a sharp image the objective must gather as much as possible the deflected light this is possible if the objective covers a large solid angle this property is called aperture or opening and this is represented by half of this cone which is some people say theta and some write alpha so numerical aperture is the measure of, measure of solid angle which is covered by this objective it indicates the ability of lens to gather light and resolve a point at a fixed distance from the lens so it is shown by this equation numerical aperture is equal to n sin theta n is the refractive index of the media and theta is one half of the angular aperture. so what can we see if we increase the light gathering by the objective the numerical aperture of the condenser should be either equal or should be more than numerical aperture of the objective lens in the later slides i will show you this so that the light cone completely fills the back lens of the objective with light so the numerical aperture of uh, objective lens also depends on thickness of the slide and cover slip media what is meet the me media in between it is glass air or oil and also on chromatic correction of the lens the refractive index is limiting because for air it is 1 and for oil it is 1.5 
so here what you can see is what is the relationship between numerical aperture and the light pole this is a low power lens approximately with a magnification of 10x what you can see the angle is very low it is 60 and the light cone is very narrow and it is very long when you increase magnification like when you go to approximately 40x this light cone becomes wider and it becomes smaller because this angle is increased and it is capturing lots of light as comparison to this then on further increasing the magnification like oil or 100x you see this aperture cone light cone is further reduced in uh, length and it has become quite wide so in light microscope both objective and eye piece which are also called ocular lens work together to produce final magnification the objective lens magnifies the specimen which produce a real image which is then projected up the body tube into the oculars which further magnifies the specimen specimen by 10x and then it produce a virtual image which we can see by our eyes so the total magnification is a magnification of objective multiplied by magnification of oculars this magnification results in a very large viewing angle of compound microscope as compared to this where when the object is directly seen from a similar distance this is 250 mm and this is 25 cm so this is the magnification magnification sh should be such that we can see the finest details of the image and it can be resolved by our retina the magnification which exceed this is known as empty magnification because it reveals no additional details then the next thing is resolution the objective and tube tube lens don't do not make an image as a point which is bright but as a disk with slightly blurred uh diffraction rings these are called airy disks the size of the airy disk depend on aperture of the lens and wavelength of the light so larger the aperture show and shorter the wavelength is smaller is the disk and better is the resolution the microscopic resolution is the so shortest distance between two separate points in an specimen that can be distinguished as distinct entities in the image it is shown by this formula this is d minimum equal to this is a magnification uh, coefficient wavelength divided by numerical aperture that is n sin theta so to increase the resolution the d should be should decrease so how it can be done we can increase any so better will be the resolution and how can we improve the resolving power we can increase n that is the refractive index by using oil immersion or by increasing the angle that is theta which has been maximized to 90 degree in best of the microscopes so there the sin theta becomes one and by decreasing the wavelength of the light which is not useful because it depends on visible light so the resolving power of human eye is 
0.2 millimeter. Compound microscope, 0.2 micrometer. And transmission electron microscopy is 0.2 nanometer. So the resolution depends primarily on the numerical aperture of the objective, but it also depends on the type of specimen, coherence of illumination, aberration correction, and contrast enhancing methodology. Thus, the correct alignment of the microscope optical system becomes of paramount import importance to ensure maximum resolution. The NA of the sub stage condenser must be matched to the NA of the objective, as I have told you earlier also. The adjustment of the aperture iris di diaphragm is required for accurate light cone formation in the specimen illumination. I will tell you when I come to condensers. Then there is another terminology which is called working distance and par focal length. The working di distance is distance from a lens of objective to surface of the cover slip when the specimen is in the focus. This working distance decreases as magnification and NA increases. For example, here you can see in 10x numerical aperture is 0.45 and working distance is 4 millimeter. But when it has increased to 100x, NA is 1.4 and working distance is greatly reduced. Another terminology is par focal distance. Par focal length is the distance between cover slip and this mounting position of the objective. Why it is important in par focal microscope, the a particular point remains in focus even when you change the objective from 10x to 100x. Then another ter terminology is depth of field. It is the thickness of the specimen that is in sharp focus for any one set of focus condition. When we consider resolution, we generally talk about lateral magnification. But this is an also important. This is called axial or longitudinal resolving power. It is measured as depth of field. So, uh, just like uh, horizontal resolution, it is also determined by the numerical aperture of the objective. As the aperture angle increases, the depth of field decreases. So it is very less or it is least with for oil emergence. The next point is contrast. Bright field illumination generally relies on light absorption, refractive index, and color for generating the contrast. Because as the light passes through the specimen, the reasons that alter the direction, speed, and spectrum of the light, they generate optical disparities, that is contrast. The difference in the light intensity and or color allows details of the specimen to become visible. As you, here you can see, some are light, some are uh, dark, the colors are different. So we can enhance this contrast by introducing staining techniques. We use staining specimens with visible light absorbing dyes, like eucene and hematoxylate. And most of the staining techniques are developed to compensate for the fact that unstained cells display little contrast in visible light. Next point is image brightness. This is governed by 
light gathering power of the objective, which is again a function of numerical aperture. So the brightness of the specimen is proportional to square of the objective of the numer numerical aperture and inversely proportional to square of the lateral magnification. In trans illumination, image brightness decreases as magnification increases. So the condenser iris diaphragm must be adjusted while changing the objective from 4x to 100x. Another thing is field of view. It is the diameter of the viewing field in millimeters. It is measured at the intermediate image plane of the eyepiece. It is expressed as either field of view number or field number. It depends on the eyepiece field diaphragm, opening diameter. And uh, depending upon that, it may increase. In eyepieces, the field diaphragm is either located between the lens elements or they proceed like in Remsten design. Now coming to aberration and diffraction. Abrection impacts resolution. So microscopes are designed to focus light rays on a single point. If more light is straying from this focal point of the lens, it will cause aberration and diffraction. So the diffraction is interference or noise that is caused by light rays. When they pass through and around the specimen, they pass through the aperture of the lens or they bend at the edges of the objective. But it is important that we should know that without diffraction, the specimen would not be visible. But if it is too much diffraction, then it will limit the resolution of the microscope. So what are the common aberrations in the lens? Is the chromatic uh, aberration? It occurs because the lens refle uh, reflects various colors present in white light at different angles according to their wavelength. This can be reduced or eliminated by making compound lenses that are composed of elements which have different color dispersing properties. Another aberration is field curvature, which can be corrected by plan lenses so that whole field of view comes in the focus. Then there is spherical aberration, which is generally due to different thickness of the different cover slips. Now coming to the optical component of the light microscope. Now, by now, I think you must have been become familiar that the two most critical uh, component of a microscope are objective lenses and condenser. The objective lens is the most important because it collects light diffracted by the specimen and it forms a magnified real image. As I said earlier, at the real intermediate image plan near the eyepiece or oculars. And the condenser lenses are important because they focus light from the illuminator onto a very small area of specimen. Now coming to the specification of objective lens. There, they have some basic properties like magnification, numerical aperture, uh, cover slip thickness. Then they have correction classes like achromatic, floor, apochromatic. They are plan or not. And they have collection, uh, uh, color or not. So if we see an objective, we can identify all these things, whether this objective has 
what properties this objective has. Like if you see written plan here, it means flat field correction. If it is written apo here, it means aberration correction. This is the magnification 60x. This is the numerical aperture 0.95. This is the tube length. Here it is infinity, infinity corrected tube lengths. Then this shows the cover glass thickness. What type of cover glass you should use? Then what will be the working distance when this particular objective will be used? And then this is the correction collar. Besides that, you can also tell where this objective has been uh, made, like it is made in, this is Nikon and made in Japan. Then this is the magnification color code. So you can identify those objective by the color code also. For 4X, it is red. For 10X, it is yellow. For 40X, it is high power, it is blue and white for oil emotion. So as I said, there are uh, different types of objective lens. Some are acromates, which are chromatically corrected for aberration of red and blue. Then there are two rights, which are corrected for aberration for red and blue, and also for spherical error. Then there are apochromates, which are corrected for red, green, and blue, and also spherically corrected. Then there are plan, which have low curvature of field, so they provide a flat field of wing. Then there are epi, which have anti-reflective -reflect coating, and these are basically designed on the specimen without a, which the, for the specimen, we, which we use without a cover slip. So if we see an apochromate lens, you will find that it is a, it has nine optical elements, which are cemented together. Two groups of doublets, one movable triplet, a hemispherical front lens, a meniscus second lens. These, all these lenses work synchronously in capturing light at high NA, so that there is minimum spherical aberration. So coming to the properties of lenses. Here you can see that the magnification, when the magnification increases from 4x to 100x, the numerical aperture is also increasing. While the focal length and working distance are decreasing. Working distance for scanning is 17 to 20, while it is 0.1 for oil emission. And the resolving power is better. Here you can resolve at distance of 0.18 by year for 2.3 micro. Then coming to the ocular or eyepieces. These further magnify the image produced by the objective 10 times because they have, these are 10 excellences. If we, ex, uh, if the eyepiece is examined, when microscope is focused and lamp is turned on, we can see a bright disc floating in the space, few millimeter outside the eyepiece. This is called exit pupil or Ramsden disk. I will talk about later in the image forming pathway. When viewing a uh, focused specimen, this exit pupil should be in coincident with the entrance pupil of the eye. This I will tell you later. Then another terminology is tube length. So mechanical tube length is distance from nose piece opening where this objective is mounted to the top edge of the observation tube where the eyepiece is inserted. The optical tube length is slightly different. It is the dis distance 
between the objective rear focal plane and the intermediate or primary image at the fixed diaphragm of the eyepiece. If the objectives and the tube lengths are mismatched, the image quality suffers and spherical aberrations occur. Next, coming to the condensers. These are also very important as the light delivery system depends on them. They are a condenser. The most common type of condenser is called Abbey condenser. It is based on two lens design. Then there are a planetic condenser, which are three lens which is corrected for spherical aberration as well as for field curvature. They are superior to the, these Abbey condition, condenser, but they still exhibit chromatic aberration. Then we have these achromatic, aplanetic condenser, which have five lenses. They provide a NAA up to 1.4, which is essential for fine uh, imaging of fine details. The aperture adjustment and proper fo uh, focusing of condenser is very, very important for full potential of an objective. Okay. And this is done by this aperture iris diaphragm. This corrects illumination, contrast, and depth of field. The opening and closing of the iris diaphragm controls the angle of light beam that bathes the specimen. So opening increases the resolution, but it decreases contrast and depth of field. If we close it more, then it increases contrast and depth of field, but it re reduces the resolution. So it should be open around 75%. Then it gives better resolution and contrast. So the condenser height allows the condenser to focus, uh, condenser focus to be adjusted by, for proper elimination of the specimen. Now comes the elimination system. This is the most important controllable variable. The light source is the first stage of optical tree in the lamp house, which contains lamp and collector lens system. The light which is emitted by this tungsten hal halogen, xenon arc, uh, arc discharge lamp or LEDs is passed through this collector system, lens system. Then the first image plane in the microscopic optical train is field diaphragm of the condenser. No, field diaphragm, not condenser. This field diaphragm controls how much light enters the condenser. And so uh, this specimen and rest of the microscope. This field diaphragm is present here in some of the microscope or it is present here in Olympus microscopes as or Nikon microscope as we have. So what I was telling you earlier, the role of illumination light cones and condenser. The light filament is focused on the frontal plane by the plane of the, this condenser. And it fills the rear focal plane of the objective by projecting a cone of light. So when the condenser NA decreases, this cone becomes very narrow. So the 
numerical aperture of the condenser is responsible for controlling the angle of illuminating of this light pole. Now I will talk about the planes, the aperture in image planes in the microscope. There are two different sets of interlaced. There is no point. Uh, excuse me. Now there is no point in coming. This is the end of the this lecture. Microscope has two different sets of interlaced conjugate optical planes, which are responsible for controlling illumination and image formation. So we have a set of four field planes, which are image forming, and a set of four aperture planes, which are illuminating. They have a fixed defined location with respect to object, optical elements, and light source, as well as eye and camera. These are called conjugates because all the planes of a given set are seen simultaneously when looking in the microscope. What is an aperture? It is a hole or opening in the open, opaque mask, which is designed to eliminate stray light from, the, from entering the light path. So this illuminating or aperture conjugate plane consists of lamp filament, condenser aperture diaphragm, objective rear focal plane and iris diaphragm. While the imaging, image forming conjugate plane locations are field diaphragm, specimen mounted on the specimen uh, slide, microscopic slide, the fixed eyepiece diaphragm and retina. So if you see in a microscope, the red ones, the lamp filament, condenser aperture diaphragm, objective rear focal plane and microscope exit pupil or eye point are the aperture or illuminating conjugate planes. While the black one, the field diaphragm, specimen plane, eyepiece fixed diaphragm and retina are the image forming conjugate planes. If you see here, the red one shows the illuminating ray path. You will see that spherical wave fronts converge at points like here, 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 and on the, in the aperture planes at the fixed points here. And the, this one image ray path, which is uh, shown in yellow, the spherical wave converts into focus ray in the image forming planes. So the light rays which are focused in one set of conjugate planes are nearly parallel when passing through other set of conjugate planes. So the reciprocal relationship between these two sets of conjugate plane determine how two ray paths interact and they form an image. This is also important when we talk about polar illumination. This, uh, since we know that illumination is the most critical factor for the performance of the optical microscope to maximize the quality of the image, the optical system is optimized according to principles of August polar. This illumination provides an evenly illuminated field of view while illuminating the specimen with a very wide cone of light. It also produces specimen illumination that is uniformly bright and it is free from glare. And as I told you in the first previous slide, these two conjugate planes are formed and they are reciprocal to each other. Now coming to my last part of my presentation is the rule of handling of microscope. So whenever you use microscope, use both hands. 
when carrying a microscope be gentle these are sensitive and expensive ins instruments keep them in upright position because eye pieces are removable and they may fall out and always keep the eye pieces in the microscope at all the time so that the dust doesn't enter the tubes do not unscrew or tamper with the lenses and at the start do not look into the microscope what you have to do is begin by raising the stays as high as it can go by turning the course focal knob this i will demonstrate on 7th then you place a stained specimen on the stage and rotate the nose piece till low power that is 10x comes in the place then move the condenser up as far it travels then you check the interocular separation of the eyepiece tubes and reset if it is necessary because it is different for every one now you should look through the eyepiece and focus on the specimen by turning fine focus knob and it should be only in one direction not like this you go one in Uh, front direction then you go back no not like that when you have to change the magnification grasp the ring of the revolving nose piece and rotate till the ob objective clicks into place do not use the objective always rotate it by here not here do not insert objective design for other one microscope in a, another because i have already told you that they have different tube lens so there will be spherical aberration then clean the lens after you finish work and when you have finished work with the microscope you should again rotate the lowest power to position of use before removing the slide you should not do that while using 100x you remove the slide it should be rotated to 4x or 10x then you remove the slide clean the stage and clean the slide and place into the slide tree then you should clean the lens and the stage and when while when you have finished it should be the stage should be clean and dry and then you should cover the microscope with a dust cover thank you